So, wow, it's been a while since I've been on the channel. Um, there's just been like no content to make lately. Uh, the weather is getting beautiful out. It's about 60 degrees today. Uh, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to replace the e-brake cable on a 2004 Hyundai Tiburon GT. Um, I replaced my left side, did make a video, but I had to replace the right side after I replaced the left. So I figured, why not? Um, get some content going back on here. So uh, here we have the e-brake cable. I'm gonna open that up for you guys really quick. And uh, go out and install it. I'll make a tool list for what we need. That makes sense. And that did absolutely nothing, so bear with me for a second. Here we have it. E brake cable. It is genuine Hyundai parts. I'm trying to keep it as much as OEM as possible. Uh, not that it really matters, but I like to try to do that. But uh yeah, so let's get this off my finger and let's get outside. So obviously what you're gonna want to do is put your car up on jack stands or uh, up on ramps. I don't have jack stands. Um, I do have a, I have ramps, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick. We'll start the car, and we'll get right up there. is pretty annoying but uh not much i can do about it until i get my ac compressor clutch fully uh removed or swapped wow uh um, more until i get a new one which is not cheap so i doubt i'll be getting a new one so i'm gonna separate these and get her on up there to be safe I chalk, chalked up the front tire uh, my front tire so so it doesn't roll or I have the chance of it rolling um, so now I need to grab a screwdriver a small screwdriver I think is in not oh there it is cool cool and I'll grab some other tools show you guys what you're gonna need potentially need all right so you're gonna need two screwdrivers both with Phillips and Phillips. I know I have a flathead right there, but I'm gonna switch over to Phillips. And you need a ratchet set of some sort. Um, you might actually not need a ratchet set. The first time I did this, I did it not wrong, but wasn't exactly the right way either. But uh, it's always good to have a ratchet set in handy just in case you do need it. Um, so we're actually gonna start out by taking the center console, this whole piece right here. So let's get to do that. You're gonna have to take out about, I think it's 10 screws. Um, I did misplace a couple, so I'm gonna have less. But clear all this junk out of here. These are the caps that go over these screw holes right here. So I think those, throw all your junk or whatever on your seat. Take off your e-brake, wow, your e-brake. Take off your shift knob by simply unscrewing it if you have it OEM. If it's not OEM, then I'm assuming you know how to take it off. So I'm gonna do that. Now this is this is all gonna stay in place up until we take this whole piece apart. So we're gonna start doing that now. I'm gonna switch off my flathead really quick. Okay, so you're gonna have three screws on this side along the bottom. You're gonna 
have three screws on that side, all along the bottom. They're gonna be in the same exact spots, just as, just on opposite sides. So let's get down here so you guys can see if you're doing it for the first time. Let me screw down here. Really wish I have a had a good tripod. And the right size screwdriver, because that would really help. One. Again, just gonna put all the screws on the seat. There's two. You might have to move the seat back. The seat might be hiding this screw. I'm try really hard. Hard. As you guys can tell, I can't talk today. I'm gonna try really hard to not strip the screw, the heads out, because I'm not exactly using the right size Phillips head. And the last one on this side, you might actually, yeah, so you can get it from over here with the seat all the way back. I didn't realize you could do that until now, so you don't have to move the seat forward or anything like that. Although, it might be easier, unless you can get your finger in there, like, like so. And I'm gonna pause it for now. Uh, I just gotta do the same exact thing to the opposite side. Like I said, all the screws are on the same, in the same spots, but patch it aside. So I'll be right back after I do that. All right, once you get all three screws, or all six screws removed, take your screwdriver again, and unscrew these. Like I said, you're gonna have these plastic caps uh, sitting up here, so just take your flathead screwdriver, or even a fingernail. Um, and then take those caps out, one of those plugs, and then simply unscrew these. These screws are pretty long, so let's see if I can. So what you do with that, switch your screwdriver over to the flathead side. Now if you don't have a plastic pry tool, which I do not, um, you're going to have to use your flathead for this. Uh, if, you don't, if you're not really worried about damaging plastic, um, then that's great. If you are worried about it, uh, I suggest maybe get a pry tool. Thankfully, I didn't settle or I didn't snap all this back in place my last time. So there's still a space right here. So you just gotta very carefully work up all the plastic on the edge. And you guys are probably wondering what this is for. Um, I bought a USB um, outlet for our, our, our phones or the GoPro or whatever might have you when we're traveling so that we have multiple power sources. But then you're literally just gonna lift this all up like that and it comes right off and now we have two more screws under here so to make it easier on this side oh actually that's not all that bad I'm still gonna use a extended screwdriver to get in there because it's a lot easier so I'm gonna do that really quick screw here now one of the previous owners, they took this all apart before, and I'll show you what I get over there in just a second. They actually broke off this tab, or the part, uh, the top section of this tab, so it still holds, the screw still holds it in place, but just not as secure. But I mean, you have several of the screws holding it in place, so it's not a big deal, and then you have to pop this plastic piece out, which I'm going to switch sides and come right back. Okay, so this might be a little bit hard, a little hard to do on camera. We're going to try to do as best as possible. But basically, sometimes you can just stick your thumb right down here and pull up. Other times, it's not so easy. Alright, that was easy enough, I guess. Didn't break anything, so that's good. Now keep your e-brake. 
if you can bring it all the way up, bring it all the way up. It's a lot easier. I'll try to set my GoPro over here. And that's probably not gonna work. Maybe, I hope you guys can see that. If not, I apologize. Close this so nothing comes out of it. And then you should be able to just lift right up. Like so. Perfect. I hope you guys were able to see that. And now what we have down here is our e-brake linkage. So, e-brake's down. See, we bring it up. And it brings the cords, it drags cords forward, which puts tension on e-brake, and that's what makes your car not move. Um, so, this, this side is brand new, this side is junk. <coughs> um, again, I'm going to see if I can try to get this all in camera. So, just bear with me for a second. I gotta loosen up this bolter, this nut, really quick, which I need my socket set for. Alright, so... In order to loosen up that nut, you're going to need a 12 mil. There it is. You're going to need a 12 millimeter. Might be a little difficult if you're using one hand like I am. So, again, I hope you guys can see this. If not, I apologize. I'm trying to do this as best as possible without a tripod or an extra hand. i lift the linkage up. Definitely can jump and just loosen, our, loosen everything up. Once you get to a certain part, of course it's going to be a lot easier to do by hand. Now, if you take this completely off and you lose how everything goes back together, it's very easy. It's not a big deal. Just don't lose anything. So to be safe, uh, So we're going to place everything on the seat. Lower your e-brake handle back down. Potentially. Nope, just kidding. I have to bring it all the way up. Bring it all the way up so you can't bring it up anymore. I, think, I don't know the technical names for it, but take this piece completely off the rod. Put everything aside. I'll show you guys how to put it back together later. So now we are left with this. So now you're going to have to... Basically going to have to swing the side over. Sorry for the really crappy angles, guys. Just bear with me. Just like that. I'll try to do it again in case you guys didn't catch it. If I can. Hold on a second. Shoot. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So basically, all you gotta do is you have to line the cable up with this hole right here, swing it over, and then the drum will pop right out. So that we have that out, have that out. Once we get everything disconnected under the car, we'll actually be able to just pull that right out and it'll come out. Uh, fairly easy. So uh, let's get out of the car. All right. So I'm pretty sure we need either 12 mil or 13 millimeter sockets to remove the three bolts that are out of the car. Um, hopefully that's all it is because I don't really feel like crawling from under and out and under and out of the car to test different sockets. Ugh. So here we go. Guys, bear with me still. It really sucks not having a car jack or a car lift. So as you see, we have... Oh, man, this isn't... Crap. Uh, so, you see we have the linkage here. The cable here. Follow it down a bit. There's a bolt right here. I know you guys can't see it well, and I apologize for that. I'll try to show you guys these as much as possible, or as best as possible. 
you got wood there. You have wood. Further down. Right. Oh, right there. That's perfect, actually. And then you have a few bolts right up here where the linkage, where both of the, uh, the cables connect right before the other side goes into the car. So, start taking that apart, and then I'll get back to you guys in just a second, and I'll let you know what size is the right socket size to get all these bolts out. Alright guys, we are back, and uh, as you can see, the first bolt has snapped. So, oh boy, I don't really have the right stuff to take care of a snapped bolt. So instead I'm just going to have to try to probably zip tie the line, the new line to this bar right here. Uh, but, so the, the first bolt is a 12 mil. The second bolt is a 13 millimeter. This one up here is a 13 mil. And then the very last one over here is another 12 mil. So you're going to have to take a 12 mil and a 13 mil. Uh, yeah. So now the next task is going to be uh, taking the spring clip or the tensioner clip, whatever you guys prefer to call it, out from where my finger's pointing at, sort of like right over there on that bracket. You don't have to take the bracket out. It might be easier if you take the tire off, but I'm not going to bother because the car is already up on ramps and I just don't feel like jacking the car up, uh, especially with the factory jack. So, I'm going to try to reposition myself, get over there, and if I can show you guys a video, I will. If not, I'll try to uh, describe it the best as possible. Alright, so basically right here is what I'm talking about with that uh, that spring clip or the tensioner clip right here. Uh, see if I can't get a better angle on that. It's right in there. It's holding this piece of the e-brake cable um, to the bracket that's attached to the caliper. So as you see right here, the drum snapped off my uh, e-brake cable, so it's not actually attached to anything anymore, and thus making my right back right e-brake, or uh, my back right, uh, yeah, my back right e-brake, um, not able to hold my car in place, or help hold my car in place. So, I'm going to try to break up some of the rust with my flathead screwdriver and uh, see what I can do. If I can, if I can, if it's easy, I'll bring you guys back on. Uh, if not, I mean, I hope that was descriptive enough for you guys. You might need a pair of uh, needleless pliers to help you out or just some kind of pliers to get in there. Um, I have a pair of adjustable dikes, so I'm gonna use those. Um, if I can, if not, then I'm gonna have to switch. But uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. I'm sure it'd be a lot easier if the tire was off. I just don't feel like taking the tire off today. So yeah, let's uh, let's get to doing that. All right, so it actually worked out a lot better than I thought. So basically, what I did is I put the uh, pair of um, adjustable dikes uh, on the clamp or the clip, and then I uh, you know I just tightened it nice and tight and uh, wiggled it back and forth, and then eventually um, the broke the rust broke free and uh, the clip came right out. So now that that's all set. You have to... Oh boy, it's going to be interesting. Um, hold on one second. It really sucks not having a tripod or somebody else to help me record right now. But... You know, I just got to get this... Get the line... Off of the e-brake. Or uh, off the clamp. Bracket, whatever you want to call it. And unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to do this with two hands again. So... Again, as I keep saying, I'll try to explain it to you guys as best as possible. Um, so yeah, just uh, just bear with me. So as you guys can imagine, um, it's going to be pretty rusty. Uh, I mean, I live in New England, so we're, we we drive through the snow and, and rain and whatnot, and blah, blah, blah. But uh, so this piece is actually, it's going to be rusted to the bracket. So all you got to do is just tap it a couple times with a hammer and uh, loosen it up real good, real good. Wiggle it back and forth, pull it towards the front of the car as you're wiggling it, and it should eventually just come free to the point where you can 
slide it right on out just like that. And that's the old e-brake cable, so don't worry about breaking it. Um, so next we're gonna uh, next we're gonna get the new e-brake cable out of the packaging. We're gonna send the piece that goes inside up through the hole, attach that, reconnect everything, or uh, bolt everything back up. Probably have to drill a hole through where that bolt broke out and uh, just zip tie it for now. I know it's not the best, but uh, it's what I can do for the time being. Reconnect everything up here and then uh, hopefully the e brake will hold the car in place. So, well, let's find out. And actually, while I have my phone out with the flashlight, this, that cluster right here where the light is, that's the final place where everything connects uh, and then that hole on the right that is where the right e-brake cable goes in through uh, to the car to uh, to all the connections so yeah uh, as you guys can see that's a brand new cable the left side I just replaced uh, a few days ago with my dad big thank you to him for helping me out uh, so yeah we're gonna get that up there I'll show you guys how to reconnect all that good stuff and uh, we'll go from there so you guys can see, I have the e-brake cable in the car. So I'm going to hopefully get to the camera for you guys. So you grab it. Oh crap! Actually, this one just popped out. No big deal. So just like that. Do the same thing to the other side. like this you grab it you line the cable up with that slit right there you twist it so that it gets in there and then once you get in there you just turn the cable again so that it's facing the right way and uh, the drum will hold itself in place um, I'm really sorry I know I keep saying it but I'm really sorry I can't actually show you show you guys most of this stuff uh, again it is really hard to record and do all this stuff in small spaces with just two hands. Um, so I mean hopefully in the near future I'll be able to get a really good tripod or even have somebody else help me out with these tutorials. But I do hope you guys are finding these helpful and useful. Um, I'm trying to explain as best as possible. But um, I'm going to say it now, I'll say it at the end, if you guys have any questions, comments or concerns, don't be afraid to post down below in the comment section and I'll uh, I, re I try to reply pretty uh, pretty fast, so I'll try to answer your questions as best as uh, as I can. But thank you guys for sticking with me. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, if you've made it this far, I hope it's informative to you. But uh, let's continue on with this process. So once you get the cables linked up to this piece, you want to put everything back together, of course, because if you don't, then it's just simply not going to work. So you got these three pieces, you have what I'll call the drum, um, I know it's not the correct terminology, but that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, you have the tightening nut, you can also, this is also we have to take off to get the whole thing apart, and you have this clip. So I'm going to show you guys how to put it back together really quick, because um, the first time it fell apart I had no idea what I was doing. That should be perfect right there. I hope it is for you guys. So you're going to take this piece with the hole in it. You're going to put it through here. You're going to take that horseshoe looking uh, clip that I just was talking about. You're not going to get anything stuck in it. Um, you're going to take this piece. And you're going to slide it around the cylinder just like this. Not the other way, no other way, just like this. And you need the holes to line up, of course, because you need to put that um, that longer bolt back through that actually tensions, tenses up the e-brake of the cables. So you're going to do it like that. Which, honestly, it might be easier. It might be easier if you put this horseshoe-looking clip um, on this piece first. Put the 
uh, the bolt or the screw, whatever you want to call it, if you want to put that in there, basically just try to feed it through the cylinder. So that way there it's all together in one piece. Actually, that is a lot easier to do. Just make sure that nothing's twisted or any of that sort. So, this is what it looks like from my angle right now. Just like that. And then you basically just gotta um, feed everything through, make sure everything lines up. Uh, and yeah. Once I'm done with that, I'll get back to you guys to put this piece back on. All right, so once it's looking like that, once you get that that uh, that clip around the cylinder, you're gonna take this piece and you're gonna put it on just like this, so that the nut end is facing the back of the car. And this is how you tighten it and loosen it. Um, truthfully, I don't think you can put it on the wrong way. I don't think it'll work. Or obviously, it won't work, but I don't think it'll fit. So you have to. So you gotta, you gotta put pressure on this plate uh, further enough back so that it won't slide off and that you have enough room to work with it. So you just screw this on. Um, don't put it too tight yet. Wait until you get the rest of the e-brake cable on on the right side or whatever side you're working on. Um, you know, bolt it all up, connect it to the caliper, um, all that stuff, and then uh, that's when you can tighten this up. So uh, I'll do this. Get back into the car, try to show you guys the, the process of putting everything back together if you need it. And then uh, we'll, we'll tighten her up. Alright guys, so everything's uh, pretty much bolted up. Except for... What the heck was that? Sorry, hold on one second. My light just turned off. There we go. Alright, so everything is all bolted up except for that bolt that I snapped. Not a big deal. So uh, now we're just going to put everything back together over here. So here's the drum. This is the piece I was talking about that bro broke off the old one. So basically all you're going to do is make sure that this is at the very top. You know, so it can't move anywhere else. And again, bear with me, working with only one hand. There's a slit. Right there, you guys can see it right there where the end of this piece is. Right there. That's where the cable is going to go up and through. Like so. Just like that. And then spin the drum so that it rests in this pocket. Push it down right in there. Perfect. Okay. It might come out. If it does, no worries. Come on, put that down there, and now you're gonna slide this piece, the rest of it. You're gonna slide it in just like that. Push. Oh, I might need two hands for this, but basically you're gonna push it up so that this silver piece is resting right in that clamp or right in that bracket. And that's really all it is to it. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that done really quick, and then uh, we can go ahead and adjust it. Alright, so now that we have everything all connected, everything is uh, good, we're going to go ahead and tighten this this up here. E-brake is down. We're going to tighten this up. Unfortunately, my battery is almost dead, and my other battery isn't charged. Um, so I'm going to try to do this as quickly as best as possible for you guys. Just keep on tightening and tightening and tightening. Use a socket if you have to. I mean, I don't think you have to go. Pretty much just go till it's tight enough so that your car doesn't move. I wouldn't go ridiculous on it, but as long as your car doesn't move and it's safe, really that's all that matters. So right there, see it's tightened up quite a bit. Or actually, it's not quite, it's not a, I can still tighten it by finger. It's still pretty easy, but, so this is all the way down. I can't move it at all. Now you pull up on it. That's nice and tight right there. 
So what I'm gonna go, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, even though my car's on the ramps, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. It's pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna tighten up a little bit more. Probably right about there. Gotta tighten it up and uh, start the car up. Let's see if we get any movement. Bring the seat up because I'm fairly short myself. Alright, you break his up and good. And uh, let's see if she moves. She does not move at all. She's not rolling. Nothing's happening. So, uh, E-brake is good. Um, so I hope you guys found this tutorial or the, this how-to um, informative. Again, I've said it plenty of times. I am sorry. I am sorry that uh, that's kind of spotty and it's not the best. But again, I am only one person with two hands, and a lot of this job requires both hands. But uh, you know, like I said, if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, be sure to leave them down below. I will try to respond to the best of my ability um, I do give shout outs to whoever subscribes to my channel uh, Gabby I believe you are our last subscriber so thank you very much for subscribing uh, I'm gonna leave a link to your channel down below uh, I'll leave a little uh, little thing right here uh, showing your channel but um, other than that I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to smash the thumbs up button be sure to subscribe if you do subscribe Hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button so you guys never miss a new video I upload. Uh, YouTube, for some reason, uh, they don't always tell you when a new video is live. Uh, and I do hope that we're going to have some good content coming for you guys soon. I am very sorry uh, for you long time subscribers. If you guys have, uh, you know, if you guys have been missing videos, we'll hopefully have some new videos coming up shortly. We've got some good stuff planned. I, uh, I have some money coming in finally, so we'll be able to get some good stuff going for you guys. But uh, until then, we'll see you guys next time.